I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Now I'm sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything except my faith. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. It's good for you to go take your place in the world. Have some ambition. Have, some, have a vision. Have a goal. Have a strategy. Try to, try to be a good person. In, in, not, not because it's your duty precisely, because that's the proper way to live. We're in danger of undermining all of that. And it's not good for people. One of the things that I've really learned, for example, recently is that there's a, or learned to articulate better, is that there's a very tight relationship between aspiration and responsibility. So let's say, well, the first question might be, do you need to aspire to something? And the answer is, well, yes, because you have to do something. You can't, if you just sit there, you'll die. You can't just sit there. You have to go act out in the sure. world. Okay, so act towards what? Well, that's whatever your aspiration is. You have to have an aim. Okay, well, what should the aim be? Well, it should be something worth doing, let's say. Why do something that you don't feel is worth doing? What do you think's worth doing? Well, if you watch other people and you judge when they're doing something worthwhile, you usually judge them positively if you see that they're taking responsibility, at least for themselves. What, do you want to be completely useless so other people have to take care of you? That's pretty pathetic. And maybe you could get your act together so you're taking care of yourself and your family. And maybe you could even do better than that and take care of yourself and your family and your community. I know I've gone on stage in front of 10,000 people and I thought I should have more PowerPoint, I should have more reminders. And I just remember walking out and saying, I'm here to help rise these people up, to give them capabilities to change their life. It's my vision, it's my goal, it's my obligation to use my unique ability to just help these people and live from my heart. And all I could think about is changing these people's lives. And when I got out there, I wasn't perfect on stage. I, I wasn't robotic and, and say the right things and I didn't have the crisp, clear PowerPoint. But when I spoke from the heart, it overcame all of that. And I get to be one of the best presenters wherever I go because I speak from the heart. Now you might be saying, Dean, that's your unique ability. And maybe that is. But I know for you in life, there are circumstances where you have to prepare. You have to do a PowerPoint. You have to do a presentation. And I want to tell you, passion and from the heart always, always wins over over-prepared and thinking from the head. Well, let me just ask you something. Right now in the, in the crazy presidential race, the, the GOP race, you know, Ben Carson is probably the smartest guy when it comes to book smart out of the whole group. And I don't watch the news a lot, but I just read a lot. And somebody said this the other day and it just, it just hit me. Someone said, man, Ben Carson is probably the smartest guy in that GOP race that's going on, whatever you think of it. And I'm not gonna share my opinion, but you know what the guy said when he was done? He's like, but we all know the smartest guy never wins. And I was like, wow, we all know that the smartest guy never wins. And what does that mean? And it's kind of what I'm sharing today. I'm not saying you shouldn't be smart, I'm sure. And so many of you are probably way smarter than I am. But what I want to tell you is enthusiasm and passion and living from your heart, to me, 100% of the time outweighs being overprepared and robotic and trying to think what to say. I, I hope I'm getting the right message across today. I, I've had this question from so many people. How are you so easy to talk on camera on stage? 
And I, I never have a good answer and I really thought through it and that's the answer. I am here right now doing this video for you because each week I want to deliver you a nugget that you could just place into your life and make a tiny shift towards a better life. So I don't need a teleprompter. I don't need a script. I didn't, I, I come here and just want to deliver and it's coming from my heart. Now I have practice. I've been on video for 15 years. I've been doing these for seven, eight years. And maybe that's not what you do, but you're still going to have these circumstances where you have to talk to your children, talk to your coworkers, talk to your employees and talk to your employer. And if you get stuck in your head, that's when you get stressed. That's when you get worried. That's when you try to remember what to say and you leave and go, Oh, why did I say that? Or why didn't I say more? What if you can go in and say, why am I going in and live with passion and have it come from your heart? Then that's truly you and you're giving the answers you're supposed to from the real you, not the facade that sometimes life makes us wear. One of the challenges I think many people have is really the discernment of information. Uh, it's really difficult to know what's the truth anymore just because information is so accessible. And I used to say that in an age of information, ignorance is a choice. And, and now we have to confront a whole nother level and that is the information that we're getting uh, is it, is it actually supporting us or is it something that really is an incentive to, to cause us to make choices? So um, for me, I think the biggest challenge has been just really an awakening to what kind of information I want to expose myself to. And I, and I think it's now more than ever a challenge for a lot of people in the world. You don't have to be perfect to inspire others. You can inspire people by how you deal with your imperfections, right? Don't feel that you have to have it all, know it all to make an impact. You don't, you just need a soul full of desire and compassion, right? It was Martin Luther King who said, you don't need a college degree to serve. You don't need to know how to fill a sentence to serve. All you need is a heart full of soul, right? And a heart full of compassion. That's all that's needed. That's what we need to focus on. Let's Let's not be limited by feeling we need other resources apart from love and compassion to make an impact because we don't, right? You actually don't need them. We are going to um, create a baseline for ourselves that's based on intention. This was around 1989 when I'd read Gary Zukov's book called The Seat of the Soul. And that book was life-changing for me because in it he talked about the power of intention and that cause and effect, what goes out comes back, is determined by your intention. The energy of your intention is what determines your life. Most people don't think about their intention. They just think about what they want to do. Most people don't think about why they want to do it. But what's going to come back to you, the energy that's going to come back to you, is the real why of why you did it. And so I then said to my producers, we're not going to do any shows that are not intentional. So don't bring me an idea unless you have an intention for the show that you want the outcome to be. And we're going to strive to see if we can live up to our intentions. And so around the late 80s, we started a pre-show to talk about what the intention was. And then a post-show after every single show to say, did we fulfill that intention. And that's about the time I realized this is bigger than me.